Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. Today's video is a book haul. So I have a lot of exciting books to share. Some of these were Christmas presents from my family. Some of these are books that I've purchased for projects or for other reasons. Some of them are books that were sent to me for review. So we are going to dive into all of it. I am actually going to start with the books that I have bought for specific projects or things that I hope to work on related to the channel. So let's go ahead and start with those and then we'll move on to other things. First, if you've seen my 2021 goals video, you know that I have books that I plan to read during the year. And so one of them, I had a mass market paperback copy of it, but for reasons you will quickly understand, I really wanted to get myself a larger copy because it's such a dense and long book. So I picked up a trade paperback copy of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This is on my to be read list for the year. I had one of those like mass market paperbacks but I'm like I don't really want to read it that way because like the text is so small and with a book this long that's kind of hard to do so went ahead and picked up a copy when I saw it on sale very happy to have that planning on reading this relatively soon within the next couple of months hopefully. I also picked up a book because the next few months I'm joining in a book club run by my friends Leanna at Lana's Library and Amanda the Naughty Librarian called the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club and so the January book we're reading is The Black Company by Glenn Cook which is one of the earliest grimdark fantasies that was published. This is from the 1980s and I'm gonna be reading it really soon as I am filming this because it's the January pick so I purchased that for the book club and then if you haven't seen my announcement video yet, I'm really excited because I'm doing a series read along with Ashley from the Bookish Realm for The Song of the Lioness Quartet by Tamora Pierce. And I wanted these trade paperback sizes. I had the other three books in the series in this size and I was just missing the first book. So I picked up a copy of Alana the First Adventure, which is the first book we're gonna be reading in February. If you wanna join us, I will link that video up above where you can check it out. And there's also a link there to the Discord where we're gonna be discussing it. Very excited for that. Then because of a movie that's coming out relatively soon that looks really interesting and because I found a half-priced copy for only six dollars I picked up The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. I'm hoping to read this this year before the movie comes out and possibly do a reading vlog surrounding it so I have some plans for it. Again I, I found a six dollar copy which was perfect. Uh, really pleased about that. So another book for a project. Lastly kind of a teaser for an announcement that that's coming in March. I purchased some books. I think I have one more pre-ordered that's on the way for this same project. And again, you'll be hearing more in the future, but I have four romances by indigenous authors. Sneak peek, exciting news is forthcoming with that. I will briefly just show you what they are. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but I have Relentless in Texas by Carrie Lindell, The Eagle and the Flame by Karen Kay, Heartbeat Braves by Pamela Sanderson, and Sanctified by Maggie Blackbird. All four of those are romance novels that are own voices by indigenous authors more information to come. Then the last book haul that I put up I had filmed right before Christmas so I have some gifts from my husband and kids that were not included in that that I wanted to share. <laughs> First up, I'll show you the books that my kids got me, which I think is hilarious. My husband, we, we took them to Barnes and Noble and each helped them buy gifts for the other person and for each other because we want to teach them gift giving. And so what's funny is they know I like books and I think like had a limited budget. So they found a couple of books and I just think it's funny. So one of them gave me How to Fight a Bear and Win and 72 Other Real Survival Tips We Hope You'll Never Need. Um, very interesting and useful book. These just like gave me a giggle. And then I also have The Hidden Magic of Walt Disney World by Susan Vaness, which, you know, Maybe after COVID goes away, we could think about going to Disney World at some point. Maybe this will be useful in the future. So um, I just thought that was sweet. So my kids got me those for Christmas. And then my wonderful husband got me two things off my wish list that I am very, very excited to have. And little did he know, one of them was perfect also for a project I'm gonna be working on this year. That is a beautiful boxed set of the Lord of the Rings series by J.R. Tolkien. 
reading. These is also on my list of things to do this year. So I have read The Hobbit, which I enjoyed. I've read The Fellowship of the Ring, but it was a long time ago and I struggled a little bit with it. So I want to reread that and then read the Two Towers and the Return of the King this year and he got me this lovely little boxed set and they're so nice. Like look at these beautiful little books. So yeah because I didn't have nice copies of these and they're just perfect. So that is super exciting and he didn't even know that was one of my goals for the year. He also got me a gorgeous illustrated special edition of a book that I read many years ago and this would be fun to read again actually because I really loved it. It is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Um, this is so great. If you guys haven't read this, it's so fun. The movie is really good, but I think the book is even more entertaining, at least to me. I, it's the kind of humor I like. It's written as if it's excerpts from a real historical document but it's not with like footnotes and stuff which I, I just enjoy. But this particular edition is absolutely stunning. It is illustrated. I mean this is just so so nice and I wasn't expecting it so that was really lovely. So big thanks to my wonderful husband for these great Christmas gifts. Then one book that I picked up for free in my building lobby, people will sometimes leave books there that they don't want anymore, and I saw one that looked interesting. This is New York 2140 by Kim Stanley Robinson. It's like a futuristic sci-fi story where the sea level rises and New York is partly underwater. I don't know, it looked really interesting and some people I know had good reviews of it. Um, so I was like, yeah, cool, I will take that. So adding that to the TBR. Then let me show you all the things that were sent to me this month for review by authors and publishers because I have a bunch of exciting things and then we'll get on to other books that I bought for myself. Okay, so first up, one book that's interesting that I might give a try to. This was an unsolicited book that was sent to me by an indie author from the UK, which I generally do prefer that people would email me if they want a review so I can say yes or no because sometimes I'm sent things unsolicited that I don't really have any interest in and won't necessarily talk about on the channel. Sometimes there is something that I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool, maybe I'll try this which is why I'm going to show you this book. But in general, I do have a P.O. box listed down below, but if you're specifically wanting a review, check my about section for information about what I do and don't accept and email me if you're interested. Uh, just an FYI for any, <laughs> any indie authors out there. But this is The Magic Fix by Mark Montanero, and it did look interesting. It's not super long. It's a fantasy story that looks like fun. It's got like elves and trolls and goblins and pixies. It looks like it's humorous as well. So he sent a letter. Yeah, he says it's a comedy fantasy novel. So I may give this one a try. Um, thank you to the author for sending me a copy. If you guys are interested, go check it out. Then I have a book that I have already read and reviewed in my mid-month wrap-up and really loved. This is Her Wicked Marquess by Stacey Reed. It's a historical romance novel that was sent to me for review. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. If you want to hear more, check out my mid-month wrap-up, which I'll link up above. But I really, really loved this. One of my favorite romances I've read recently, and I it is a more hard-hitting one if you're looking for a light and fluffy historical romance. This is definitely not it. It's dealing with more hard-hitting topics like toxic masculinity and rape culture and the treatment of marginalized women, so it does get quite intense, but I loved it. I also loved the romance between the characters. It was fantastic. So this was sent to me for review, and I'm very happy that I said yes to it. <laughs> then something that got a little bit delayed and so this is late but better late than never because given the way things are going this might be relevant next year as well. I was asked if I was interested in a children's picture book which I thought was cool. This is called Always Together at Christmas by Sarah Sargent and I really like this a lot. It was something that was written with the way that Christmas was happened due to COVID where a lot of times families couldn't be together and so like you'll see the zoom screen um, and it's just really cute. It's a really cute little book. Santa and the elves have face masks on <laughs> like um, yeah like simple picture book but like a nice way to talk about holidays being different but still prioritizing love and family even when things are not the way we maybe want them to be. And hopefully by next Christmas things will be better if the vaccination stuff gets going. But yeah, thank you so much 
for sending me a copy. I think, who sent this to me? It was um, uh, Wonderkin PR sent this to me. So a little late, but uh, if you have kids, if you're interested, go check it out. Then I have one book that was sent to me from the Harlequin publicity team for promotion on Instagram, and this looks adorable. I actually probably today should take a picture of this because I need to post it. Uh, but this is The Beautiful Things Shop by Philip William Stover, yet another installment in the Karina Adores line. And this looks and sounds adorable. It is an own voices male male romance between these two guys who end up having to share a space for their stores. One of them is a fine arts dealer and the other one is an easygoing extrovert who collects retro toys and colorful knickknacks. So it's kind of an opposites attract stuck together kind of romance where they're both sharing the same space for their little stores and yeah it just looks cute. It says it's a brilliantly written LGBTQ plus take on a classic small town romance. I love it. It looks great. Then the folks over at Macmillan Kids were kind enough to send me a finished copy of a new middle grade nonfiction book that looks really interesting and I'm going to be reading this in February. It is called Gone to the Woods Surviving a Lost Childhood by Gary Paulson. For those who don't know, Gary Paulson is the author of Hatchet, which is a well-known best-selling middle grade story that's like a survival story. And because I somehow managed to get through my childhood without having read Hatchet, as you're going to hear in my end of month wrap up, I read it <laughs> in January because I wanted to have that context before I got into this. But this is his memoir of growing up with a really difficult childhood and actually spending some time surviving in the woods and the things that inspired Hatchet and some of his other books. So I'm really looking forward to this. It is a memoir written for a middle grade audience, so I assume it's probably going to be pretty quick. But yeah, they were kind enough to send me a finished copy and has a signed book plate. So thank you so much to Macmillan Children's. This looks really interesting and I will be reading this next month. Then I have a book that I am now reading and it's really good so far. This is a finished copy that was sent to me kindly from the folks over at Orbit. It is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. And this is a co-writing duo like that each of them are authors who've written individually but they're working together on this. It is an epic adult fantasy multi POV and so far I'm really into it. One of the main characters is a con artist who's trying to worm her way into the elite of a certain society and yeah it's really complicated. I'm not super far into it yet. It is definitely a tome but so far I'm loving it. Really excited to keep reading so thank you to Orbit for that. And then lastly I got a book that was beautifully packaged. I will put a picture right here and this was such a surprise. I wasn't expecting it but I'm very pleased to have it. It's a Tor.com release that is coming out in June and that is The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo. I am really interested to read this. It's a reimagining of The Great Gatsby but with magic and an Asian protagonist. So yeah I'm really really curious about this. They sent it in this beautiful package and it included this really cute little card to The Chosen and the Beautiful, Jay Gatsby invites you to a night of revelry and magic. The 1st of June, 1922, five minutes to midnight, West Egg, New York. Be wicked, be witty, be bright. Dinner, drinks, and dancing until summer's end. Um, so I just thought that was super cute. I'm really happy to have this. And you know what's interesting is I was talking in a video last year about how one of the classics I was unpopularly not a huge fan of in high school was The Great Gatsby and said it might be interesting because it's not a very long book to revisit that as an adult and see how I get on with it. And so especially since I have this I'm kind of thinking maybe I do a reading vlog where I like reread The Great Gatsby and then read The Chosen and the Beautiful. That could be an interesting thing so that's, that's something I'm thinking about. So thank you to Tor.com. Really excited to get into this and again it comes out in June. Okay I have a few more books that I purchased for myself this month and then my book of the month club box which I also purchased. First up because it went on sale I bought a book that I have already read in eARC of and knew I wanted to own a copy of. This is Crazy Stupid Bromance by Lissa K. Adams. It was one of my favorite romances of the year and I really really love this entire series. I knew I wanted to own a finished copy. I was kind of just waiting to see it go on sale and it did so I picked it up. Then another book that I saw on sale and I kept hearing great reviews of it and was finally convinced okay I need to give this a try is Fable by Adrian Young. Also this cover you guys is so stunning. I don't know if you can see it on screen but in her eye there's a ship <laughs> which is like really freaking cool. I've just heard so many good things about this. I was less interested in Adrian Young's earlier books. They were 
not really my thing but this sounded interesting it's about a girl who i think is left by her father on a deserted island and has to survive and i don't know there's magic in it of some sort I, I want to give it a try so I grabbed a copy. Then a book that I am entirely blaming on Mara from Books Like Whoa, which I, I, I feel like she is one of the people <laughs> that will like most frequently convince me that I should buy things. Other booktubers do as well but like the number of books I've bought because of Mara is funny. This is one of her favorite books that she read in 2020 and one that I would really like to read as well. It is Black Reconstruction in America 1860 to 1880 by W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, yeah, this is definitely a tome, but it is a classic nonfiction work and one that I know she really loved and it tackles topics that I am very interested in. So I was at my local indie bookstore and they had a copy and I bought it. Um, this is something I would like to tackle this year. Maybe I'll add it to my list of classics to read in 2021 because I'm, I have space for things that I just decided to throw on there. So maybe this will be one of them. And then another classic, I, I read this in high school actually, and I really enjoyed it. I've been wanting to do a reread at some point and I have had my eye on this particular edition of it because it's really pretty. So again, I saw it on sale and decided to grab it. This is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, the 75th anniversary edition, which is beautiful. This is a modern classic that's not particularly long. It is a coming of age story following a black girl in the south and I remember liking it when I read it in high school and finding it to be really powerful but it is one that I would like to revisit as an adult so um, grabbed that. Also because it was super on sale and I just sometimes this is the thing like I put a lot of books on my wish list because I'm like eventually I want to get those books. I'm going to keep an eye on them and see if I can get them somewhere for inexpensive and um, this was an instance of that. I grabbed The Faded Sky by Mary Robinette Kowal. This is the second book in the Lady Astronaut series. I read The Calculating Stars last year. I really loved it. I do want to continue on and uh, so now I have all of them because I was sent an arc of the third book even though I hadn't read the first one at the time that they sent it to me. So now I have all three and I can just catch up on the series. Lastly, I have a little bit of a story with this one. I took my youngest son to Barnes and Noble and you can pick out a toy. And of course, while there I was like, well, let me maybe get a book. And I actually asked him, I was like, okay, here are some books I'm thinking of. Which one should I get? And he was like, get this one, mom, because you like spooky stuff. So I picked up a book that is on my radar actually because of one of my patrons, Beth, has been raving about this one and it sounds up my alley. I grabbed The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. This is a gothic haunted house story, which y'all know I've been loving gothic horror and uh, she said this is very, very good, which is exciting. So I got that. And then lastly, I have my Book of the Month Club box. So I really like Book of the Month Club. I think they've done a great job of including a diverse array of titles and some great ones and I think it's a pretty good deal. It's $15 a month including shipping for a new release or sometimes pre-release hardcover book and you can add up to two add-ons per month for $10 each which I think is pretty great. No pressure but if you are interested I do have a link down below. If you use it to sign up I get a free book um, which is always fun but this month I have a particularly large box because of two exciting things. Number one, I completed their 2020 reading challenge. Yeah! So this is kind of cool. If you have the app, they have a reading challenge where if you meet these challenges of reading and reviewing different books that you've gotten from them through the year, you get a free candle. So I have a candle in my box. The other thing is once you've purchased 12 boxes from them, you're considered a BFF, which means you get a free book the month of your birthday, and you get to pick one of the finalists for their book of the year competition, which is exciting. Plus I have my normal book of the month that I picked up, and I had one add-on, which is why the box is like so much larger than usual. Okay, so this is the candle. It's a new chapter by Anecdote Candles. Smells like freshly printed pages and unlimited possibilities. It's just like a fun dyed candle. It smells really good. It's kind of like musky and sweet and I like it. I will definitely use that. And then I decided to get the book of the year. This is the book that won of their top finalists for the year and I'm really happy about it. I had a feeling this was at least going to be a finalist which is why I'd been putting off getting a copy because I was like I'm going to get a free copy <laughs> when it wins or makes the finalists 
because I'd been wanting it for a while. This is The Vanishing Half by Brett Bennett. So this was their book of the year, which is super fun. And it's got all the fancy gold stuff because it was the winning book of the year. So that's, that's neat. Um, but yeah, this is something that I've been meaning to read for a while and really would like to. It's a book that deals with racial passing and I've heard a lot of really good things about it. Very pleased to be adding that to my collection. Then my January book of the month is actually an early release. This doesn't come out until March. So the fact that we got it in January with book of the month is pretty cool. This is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. And what's interesting is I had an e-arc of this from NetGalley. So I'm like, well, I guess I just have a physical book I can read now. This is an adult contemporary romance with fake dating. I love fake dating and I've been wanting to read something from Sarah Desai. I also think this is just a beautiful cover. It's so pretty. So yeah, that was my book of the month. And then I did get one add-on rounding out my collection of Riley Sager books so that I can read all his backlist and probably do a video about his books at some point. I have Final Girls. This is the last one I was missing. Got it as an add-on. I've been like slowly accumulating them and I'm hoping to read this one pretty soon. So those are my three books from Book of the Month Club this month. And those are all of the books. I, I like, I'm still working on purchasing fewer books, but I do think I did a better job this month than I have done in previous months. And I'm trying to be intentional about what are the things that I'm picking up and pre-ordering and yeah. Anyway, so talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on any of the books I talked about today. And for your question of the day, tell me about a classic book that you have either read before and loved and maybe would be interested in rereading or one that you're interested in getting to, if that's something you're interested in. And you can take this to include genre classics as well. This could be sci-fi fantasy classics if you like. If you're not into like literary classics, that's totally fine. But let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.